What we're looking at here is uh, the National Beef Quality Audit results. Uh, and actually, there was a similar study done in 1974. And as you see, that's the marbling declined as we go from the percent cattle that graded prime and choice declined as you started in 1974 down to 1995. And then you'll start seeing a slight increase in the percent of cattle that grade choice and prime in this, in this bar chart. Today, that number is closer to 70% of the cattle that come out of a feed yard, those feed yard steers and heifers would grade prime or choice. So that's quality grade, which is an estimate of how good the meat is gonna taste, the tenderness, juiciness, and flavor. Now let's talk about yield grade. Yield grade is an estimate of how much lean I'm gonna get out of that carcass, how much fat and bone I'm gonna to have to throw away. And the true definition of yield grade, according to USDA, is the percent closely trimmed, boneless, retail cuts from the round, loin, rib, and chuck. The round, loin, rib, and chuck are the four primal cuts, the major cuts from a beef carcass. So that's why they put those terms in there. The round, the loin, rib, and chuck are the four major cuts that come from a beef carcass. All right, so when we talk about yield grade, there are five yield grades. One, two, three, four, and five. That's pretty easy. You have to remember that one is the best and five is the worst. One would have the highest lean meat yield. Five would have the lowest lean meat yield. And so five is bad, one is great. Okay, keep that in mind. As you take a look at what we're trying to do with yield grade is estimate of the carcass, what percent of that carcass after all these people take a knife and trim out uh, fat and take out bone, what percent of that actually ends up in the form of box beef? So from the carcass to box beef, what percent of box beef is there? And that's what yield grade is going to tell us. And that is a value determination as they pay the producer because really fat cattle, they have to trim more fat off and they lose money off of that. So they want a cattle that are still going to be prime and choice, but they want those cattle to be generally yield grade twos and threes. That's kind of the industry standard. A yield grade two is probably what the industry really is shooting for as far as yield grade. And they accept threes, fours and fives are just are, are looked down on as being very, very fat cattle. Yield grade ones are great, but generally cattle are yield grade ones because of maybe health issues or other maybe genetics where the cattle didn't grow very well with the contemporaries in its group. So many times yield grade one is not the industry standard, it's really a yield grade two. All right, so there are four factors in determining yield grade that we use. Because we can't take every carcass and separate it out into piles of lean, fat, and bone because we wouldn't have retail cuts, we're going to take uh, some measurements from those carcasses to determine uh, what the yield grade is of those carcasses. The first one and most important is the fat thickness measured at the 12th rib cross section. So remember, we rib the carcass between the 12th rib and 13th rib. And when you do that, it exposes the ribeye, and we're gonna measure the fat opposite that ribeye. We measure that fat going from the backbone side of the ribeye to the other side two thir uh, three quarters of the way. So we, we measure fat thickness by going from the backbone side of the ribeye to the other opposite side. We go three quarters of the way and take a measurement at that point. That's called 12th rib fat thickness. The grader does have the ability to adjust that based off of other fat indicators on the carcass. That's particularly important if when they take the hide off, if they actually, actually accidentally remove some of that fat opposite that 12th rib cross section. So 12th rib fat, number one, most important criteria. Second is the weight of the animal. As cattle get heavier, as carcasses get heavier, those carcasses tend to be fatter. So as you look at me and I gain 50 pounds, it's gonna be mo mostly fat. Okay? I'm at that part of my life and that's the same thing in feed yard steers. As cattle get heavier, once they reach their fattening phase of their life, generally every pound they put on, about 85% of that pound is gonna be fat in some form or fashion. And so as you look at that, cattle that get heavier tend to have an, a, a, a lower amount of retail product yield because they're fatter. The next factor is uh, ribeye area at the 12th rib. So that's the area of just the long isthmus muscle, none of the other muscles around it, just that one large ribeye muscle that sits right in the middle of that 12th rib cross section. And then the final factor 
is percent kidney, pelvic, and heart fat. So percent kidney, pelvic, and heart fat is just that fat inside the body cavity, the fat that would have been in the area around the sternum where the heart would have been, that's heart fat. The fat around the kidney, that's kidney fat, and then the fat in the pelvic girdle, in the pelvic portion of uh, that uh, wing of the pelvis of that animal, that would be called pelvic fat. So that percent, so how that's figured is if we had an 800 pound carcass, if we estimated that the carcass had 16 pounds of kidney, pelvic, and heart fat, then that animal has 2% kidney, pelvic, and heart fat. So again, percent kidney, pelvic, and heart fat would be another factor that they would use in the yield grade equation. So when we put all that together, we come up with a yield grade. And so here's an example. Here's an animal that has 7 tenths of fat opposite the ribeye. You can see where the ruler is on the picture. It measured 7 tenths. It weighed 750 pounds, had a 13.5 inch ribeye, and had 2% kidney, pelvic, and heart fat. And that's just a guess. That's the grader just looks at that and estimates that on that part. The other ones are measured by the machine, if you remember, and by a scale. But that one is an estimate. And when you put that together, you look at that carcass, it's a yield grade 3. Now here's a, a very lean animal that's a yield grade 1. And you can see, just looking at the picture, it looks much leaner than the last one that we looked at. And the factors on that one is 0.3, that's 12th rib fat thickness, it was 0.3 measured opposite the ribeye. It weighed 800 pounds, had a 15 inch ribeye, 1.5% kidney knob. You put all that together and the final yield grade is a 182. So you compare that and just looking at the cross section, you can see that this is a leaner animal. And when you put all those four, uh, four factors into the equation, it comes out as a yield grade 1.8. So remember, one is the best and five is the worst. All right, you can look at these cattle. Again, just look, there are some cro five cross sections of kind of an average yield grade one, two, three, four, and five carcass. And then you can compare it to the cross section in the 12th rib and kind of get an estimate of what you think that yield grade might be for that animal. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back and do another little worksheet. And I want you to just kind of guess what you think that yield grade is.